has a great legacy of planning dating back to 1909 with the Burnham Plan, but authors Brad Hunt and John DeVries write that Chicago's not planning well for the future. Their book, Planning Chicago, published by APA's Planners Press, examines what has worked for the city and where the city is currently falling short in terms of planning for its future. I'm Roberta Ruers with the American Planning Association. Joining me today is D. Bradford Hunt, Dean of the Evelyn T. Stone College of Professional Studies and Vice Provost for Adult and Experiential Learning at Roosevelt University, and John DeVries, Director of the Marshall Bennett Institute of Real Estate at Roosevelt University. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. In your book, you write that Chicago is not planning well for its future mm -hmm. or with confidence. You mentioned that a lot, confidence. Mm. What do you see as the immediate and long-term effects for not planning well? Well, I think one of the things we're seeing is a lot of announcements about one-off projects. And I think the public is starting to ask the same question we as planners are asking is, and what's the relationship of this project to this project? Um, and I think that there's, uh, there's some credibility in a time, some credibility issues in a time of scarce resources. Are we using our resources wisely? Are we using them strategically? And uh, without a plan, it's hard to see how some of these projects tie together. Yeah. And we lack a long-term vision. We had visions in the past because we planned well. We said we're going to uh, defend downtown. We said we're going to uh, pr uh, protect transit. And yeah. well, we did had a lot of goals, and right now it's not clear what the direction for the city is. Uh, and we're facing major challenges where uh, neighborhoods are feeling left out of the uh, boom of the last decade, uh, where there, uh, our fiscal challenges are significant because we're not doing wise capital budgeting because we don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. What is the dangers? You mentioned one-off projects, and I'm thinking you mean like the Chicago River plan. What yeah. are the dangers of doing the one-off projects? Because those are short, easy wins, right? Yeah. As opposed to let's sit down and really rack our brains about this and say this is what we need the city to be. Well, I, th I think there's a couple of dangers. Um, some of the national business press has been <clears throat> talking about Chicago as an investment market. And I, one of the nationally publicized surveys this week had 15 American cities ranked, and I think we came in 13. And the, and the consensus was there's not a lot of predictability. Uh, when developers think about coming here, they're not sure what it's going to take or how long it's going to take to get a project approved. They're not sure what other kind of projects are going to be built around them or not built around them. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, I think we I think we lose some level of investor interest. There's no, uh, no question about that. I think the the other danger of the one-off projects is is a great quote we've got in the book from Lawrence Massal, who's the head of the Civic Federation. You know, they're kind of a watchdog of mm -hmm. government. And Lawrence, uh, I uh, said in the book to us, uh, we had a nice interview with him. Uh, one of the great things planning does is it protects against corruption. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and I think there is a temptation uh, with one-off things and uh, this, uh, and, and as we talk about very disparate funding sources, 150 different mm -hmm. uh, TIF funds and so on, I think there is a temptation, we're not, I'm not sitting here making particular accusations, but I think there's a temptation, uh, there's a temptation for abuse. and. Uh, or even bad decisions. Or just, just, or just, on a more simpler level, bad decisions. Yeah. Not well yeah. thought through ideas. Somebody yeah. has a random idea. Mm -hmm. I heard about an idea the other day for uh, a $2 million TIF project for uh, a, a tennis complex on the former site of the Robert Taylor Homes. Oh, yeah. And I thought, okay, that might be a good idea. That might be a bad idea. Who knows? But without a plan, without some sense of what that area is going to be, and without some sense of prioritization or criteria or mm -hmm. it's just a matter of clout, politics, whether mm -hmm. somebody can be convinced on any given day, whether the mayor likes it. And so those are the best way to rationally plan. That's not the kind of good government we need in Chicago. Yeah. Now, here's a question. We have the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning. They kind of oversee the region, several counties. Why is it important for Chicago to still plan? Isn't Chicago included in that regional plan? Doesn't that cover Chicago? Do we need two, is it in essence two plans? Well, um, I think it's important to remember CMAP is a fairly recent creation. Um, I think it's been in existence now five or six years. It resulted from the combination of the old Chicago Area Transportation Study, which was 
funded heavily by the Illinois Department of Transportation to do regional systems, transportation system planning, and a, and a smaller agency, uh, Northern, NIPSI, Northern Illinois Planning Commission. And uh, the idea was let's put land planning and regional transportation planning together. And, um, and I think that merger has been largely a success. Uh, but their primary mission is still these regional transportation kind of things, the, the kind of projects across county borders. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's their forte. And I, I know some of their staff came to one of our first presentations on the book and said, you know, we'd love to have the city be able to be a stronger planning partner with us. We can handle this higher level stuff, this regional stuff, particularly the, the large transportation stuff. But the fine-grained things that we really need city collaboration on, mm -hmm. uh, we really need the city to be a partner. And I think that's really what we're talking about. CMAP's done a terrific job with smaller communities that don't have a lot of planning capacity and aiding them in doing some of the grants that they do. Some of the grants they do yeah. for the small cities. But we're a city of, of 2.7 million. We yeah. need a planning department. We need to plan. We can't rely on some larger regional body to think through the, all the difficult challenges of a city of 2.7 million. And you say a city of 2.7 million, that's including a lot of the neighborhoods. So I'm yes. thinking that if, you know, the focus is Chicago, you think of the loop, the downtown area, but you've also got to factor in all of these neighborhoods. Um, you mentioned one of the calls to action you have in planning Chicago is saying increasing transit capacity. And I'm sure that means getting people in and out of the city, but also yeah. between neighborhoods and that sort of mm. thing. We've got a few bus rapid transit area sections that are going on. Is that answering the need? You know, we've got the Divi bikes now. Yeah. Well, the bus rapid transit technology is going to be new to Chicago. It's not new uh, worldwide. It's been used successfully in some other cities. I would say that if we were starting Tabla Raza and we didn't have a transit system, we were a medium-sized city, the BRT would represent some kind of advance. Mm -hmm. um, I would say as two small segments that we're putting into an already a massive mature system, uh, it's questionable that it could have any meaningful level of impact on capacity. Yeah, we yeah. like transit, but it, the city has not made the major investments that other cities have done uh, in their transit network. Like uh, if you've other cities have planned well, like yeah. Minneapolis, Minneapolis, St. Paul, there's a lot of new light rail going in, and then collaborating with landowners around the train stations, they're doing a whole new generation of housing, mixed-use projects in those neighborhoods around Did, around around transit yeah denver so, same thing denver's doing a very good job yeah. los angeles is digging tunnels and it, i mean it's very expensive but they've been able to win federal money in part because they've planned well in part because they've been aggressive about expanding their transit capacity and we've uh, the cta is trying to hold on to what it's got and it's doing the best it can but mm -hmm. without a w with a stronger vision and a stronger plan uh mayor richard M. Daly and Mayor Rahm Emanuel could go to Washington and perhaps have a better shot at these federal funds and these partnerships to do uh, the kind of transit expansion that we need between neighborhoods and also to continue to serve the loop, which will continue to be the primary economic engine. Right now we're at capacity on uh, several lines. Uh, we need to expand office space in the West Loop, yet transit's kind of thin there. We still haven't solved the problem between the two major train stations. Uh, there are good plans out there, good ideas out there, uh, but without a comprehensive framework, uh, we haven't been able to, to take advantage of that, of that, some of the good planning that has been done. Okay. And the census has shown that Chicago's losing population. Mm. What populations do we need to attract to the city? What do we need to do in the neighborhoods? How it's do we real solve hard. that? It's, this is the big challenge. Chicago yeah. lost 180,000 African Americans in the last decade. It lost a total of 200,000 people. And uh, that's it, it, and it's not doing as badly as other cities. So in, in that big a population base, we're, we're going to be okay. But several neighborhoods are really thinning out in ways that is, is negative. Um, in the past, we have been much more successful than other cities in attracting immigrants from Latin America and Asia. And those mm -hmm. have been really important to sustaining all sorts of neighborhoods that otherwise would also have depopulated. And when you have immigrants coming in, you have the tax base, you can continue to function well as a city. Where are they going to come from? Um, I think that's a, that's a major challenge. We need to, to focus on how we can attract people to Chicago and particularly attract people to neighborhoods that might not otherwise be on, on the top of their list mm -hmm. and see that as an opportunity 
uh, and uh, that's going to be a real challenge in s several parts of the city. But we've got to focus on it, and we don't have a plan for it. And I think one of the things that's, that been, that's been widely observed is uh, we're doing a great job with our undergraduate and graduate colleges in attracting students here and keeping them in town. And they, 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 like, to, they like the bars, they like the lifestyle, they like each other, and, and we love having them. And then they uh, uh, get married, and they look across the breakfast table, and they say, and we're having our first child, and are we going to stay in the city? And it's that middle age, that uh, from the younger to middle age family group. So retention's got to be part of the story, too. And, and then uh, that gets back to that, the really tough problem of how you, how you do that combination of neighborhood and school improvements mm -hmm. that make people feel like these, these are a safe, productive place to send their children. And... Uh, that's that's got to be that's got to be one of the core challenges attracting families and keeping families right yeah. and the schools are yeah. going to be essential in that uh, yeah with the declining birth rate yeah yeah got to do something get the people in there yeah you know in September they announced Whole Foods is going into Englewood is that a baby step solution to fixing you know attracting people into the neighborhoods that sort of thing well I was driving down the highway when I heard that announcement and, and I have to tell you I I, I kind of did it uh, sucked my breath in when I when I heard it it kind of took my breath away as a and and I just said um, gosh this this is we love anyone who wants to think about investing in, in Englewood or neighborhoods like it but is this the right match and is this another mm -hmm. one-off deal is is right. this saying if you're gonna do business in Chicago you got to put a store there and I think that um, or or is it part of this is it, is it part of a plan for Englewood? This is one of a number of amenities that have to happen. And then I think there's the other question of, is this the best store for the demographics of the area? Mm -hmm. And has any, did anyone really do a thoughtful understanding of, of the, I know the city's just completed a citywide retail analysis. Did anyone consult that about the kind of demographics that this area had? Uh, before they said this is the particular store that's going to go there. Uh, it's a I, big leap. It's and a big leap. Yeah. It, you know, the Detroit store is near Wayne State University. Right. And universities have... Uh, Fairly close to the central business and district. And not that there. far from the central business district. This yeah. is in Englewood, 63rd yeah. and Halstead. Now, I'm sure there's going to be... I'm sure... And the Whole Foods people took a look mm -hmm. at the numbers and somehow think it's going to work. And, and they and Whole Foods has adapted in, Den, in uh, Detroit. Okay. Uh, they have some lower priced produce and things. I hope it works. I hope that it attracts new investment, and, mm -hmm. and, and it, did, it did attract some new investment in Detroit. It does strike me as, wow, I had the same reaction as John. Whoa, I could th name a half a dozen other neighborhoods where I think it might have a stronger chance of success, all of which are low-income, underserved communities. Yeah, and then you also have to think about there have been some of the smaller chains, ethnic chains that have done very well here. I think mm -hmm. we should be encouraging them to go into some of those neighborhoods as Pepe's. There's, there's several mm -hmm. smaller chains. Aldi's has come in and I think done an extremely good job of locating in a lot of places the traditional grocery stores didn't. Mariano's has come in with a fun, interesting combination. They have this nice customized uh, food to go kind of operation, mm -hmm. almost a deli kind of thing, but combined that with, with kind of value, value, value priced groceries, roundies and stuff. So there might have been some other storage choices that uh, might have been a little bit better matched there, but we, we wish them luck. It'll yeah. be a nice experiment, if you will. <laughs> I kind of looked at it like, oh, is this maybe what the Starbucks was back in the 90s? Like, this neighborhood is, you know, going to get yeah. better and, and help out. I don't know. Yeah, there was always that, if, if you were able to get the Starbucks, you'd kind of made it. There was that kind of panache to it, remember? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Chicago's one of the unique Rust Belt cities that mm -hmm. hasn't suffered the fate of Detroit or Cleveland or St. Louis. It, it, we had a strong plan up until, I believe it was the 1966 plan, mm -hmm. that might have prevented this. Are we in jeopardy of kind of backsliding and, I don't want to say necessarily becoming exactly like Detroit, but suffering the, some of the similar fates that Detroit or some of these Rust Belt cities are still grappling with today? Well, I, you know, Chicago has such a locational advantage. Um, you know, we have, uh, we're at the core of the country, we have all of the major railroads have crossed here and have, have for the past century. The six major trunk lines all come here. Um, and we're the crossroads of the Midwest Expressway system. So to some extent, we kind of get by 
-hmm. on, on a locational advantage. I think the question is also, in some ways, we're always going to be a little competitively stronger than uh, uh, Detroit or some of these other Midwestern cities. We have such a, such a huge geographical advantage. But um, I think the question is, can we, can we grow beyond that? Mm -hmm. Can we go beyond just relying on, 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 on this gift uh, <laughs> that we have? And, um, and I think that there are lessons to be learned from some of these other cities. I think uh, uh, one of our colleagues, Les Pollock, has put this list together of other cities that have done planning uh, since 2000, and I think we're, we're one of a few that hasn't been doing some serious long-range planning. So um, I think we've got to think about uh, can the tourism uh, sector in the, be, be grown more than it is? Can the Mahoma McCormick district become mm -hmm. more than it is, for example. Tourism is going to be part of our future. We're doing great with educational institutions. Can we do more things to encourage that? Mm -hmm. um, we are not the international headquarters city we were, but we are still the center of a lot of regional business, mm -hmm. and um, we want to keep this business core, this, this, this wonderful central area strong. So I think there's a lot of things we need to, we're going to have to be proactive. Um, I don't think we risk the fate of becoming a Detroit, but I think we sometimes risk the fate of resting on our laurels mm -hmm. a little bit, resting on just some of our built-in locational advantages and, and just sheer size. I mean, we've got to do better than that. Yeah. 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 We think we built Millennium Park, so we're done. The whole city's kind of done. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. That was yeah. a long-range set of planning that got us to that point. Yeah. That started in, the 50, in 1958 and 1966 and 1973 that said we're going to bring people downtown, we're going to grow a 24-7 central area, and it's worked. It's terrific. It's fabulous. Now, the neighborhoods it was a bigger challenge. We don't have great answers for that. We have some answers, though, that we need to pursue, like some of the work of the local initiative support corporation, which has done really interesting neighborhood planning in a program called the New Communities Program. And so there are things we can do, but we need to, to have a, a, a more focused comprehensive plan that looks at the entire city that everyone can buy into so that we know okay we want to sustain these strengths we want to grow in these areas we want to attract new populations we want to have a, a first-class transit system we want to have um, in, you know industrial corridors that are going to be vibrant and provide employment I mean right now people don't see a direction they kind of see lurching and they kind of think well gosh you know wh wh what's next and there isn't really that uh, they, they hear about fiscal crises. We, it, the way out of that is to say, hey, look, let's, let's go and move in a direction. It doesn't, it's not going to solve everything. Planning is one tool of many. But without that, it seems like the press release of the day, um, and it's kind of a lot of randomness, not focus. I think another, another thing we could leverage a lot more, and I know I heard Chris Kennedy spoke, speak about this last week, and that is, uh, we've got such a great asset here with our research universities mm -hmm. and uh, Argonne and Northwestern Chicago and, and and we should be really trying to leverage that I think a lot more than we have I mean there's just so many things that can be done um, but that's another core competency that we have that we really could grow I think a lot more yeah. yeah so here's the question I know you guys put a lot of blood sweat and tears in this would you do it all over again and write it again of course, there wasn't blood, was there? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, it, uh, absolutely, and uh, yeah. it was it it was a terrific project to think about this long range, this broader picture of Chicago. Uh, to think about just the city, not necessarily the region. We, the region would have then sprawled if the book had gone in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and, and to really think about the state of planning and how the American Planning Association, through works like ours, can advance the state of planning, can advance the agenda of planning, which is a good one and which the city has not been focused on. When you don't have a department with the name planning in it, you're not signaling to people that mm -hmm. it matters. Yeah, yeah. Well, APA should be commended. I know that you started with the Planning Los Angeles book. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been, we were lucky enough to get Lambda Alpha to kind of help us here too with some resources. And I know Lambda and APA are teaming to do the next one, I think Planning Atlanta. And those folks have all been in touch with us too. They've been excited about this. So I think this is turning into a little bit of a picture of planning around the country, which mm -hmm. I think is a, mm -hmm. was a nice byproduct. So, profile of it. To, yeah. What would you say surprised you or you didn't know when you started delving into your research and writing the book? 
well, I don't know. I didn't know if this guy would be a good partner. To <laughs> or not, you know, and, 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 you know and what I what we ended up concluding, I think, very shortly was that uh, two plus two in our particular case uh, made ten because mm-hmm. he he brought this great granular understanding of, of Chicago's history, and I brought, uh, I, I think, a, a passion and a lifelong of experience with planning, and mm-hmm. I think it was a great a great matchmaking. There was a lot of synergy, and that was yeah. really positive for the book. It wouldn't, yeah. I could never have written it by myself, and John couldn't have written it by himself. Right. So, and so that's ideal. Yeah, and that's why you you form partnerships like this. Yeah. Anything else? No, I think this is uh, it's been a great adventure. We hope uh, we hear at least that um, that this is being consulted in some of the classrooms around the country. So we're hoping Good. we've. We hope we inspire the next generation of planners to do even better than, than we did. And it's also inspired the Chicago Tribune in part to run a series about uh, Chicago's future and about yeah. planning. Yeah. And we've been able to talk to groups around the city, all sorts of civic groups who are starting to get the message and understand that, yeah, wow, they, they, they haven't thought about planning mm-hmm. as a part of their own worlds, whether it's the Chicago Community Trust or um, maybe the uh, Landmarks Illinois. Landmarks this week. Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, they want to be part of a plan. They yeah. realize that yeah. we need some uh, stronger vision and that uh, as a way out of some of the fiscal and other challenges we face. And everyone's a part of it. Well, I'd yep. like to thank you both very much. Thank you. And yeah. Planning Chicago is available at APA's website through our bookstore.